Modding your own games is easier than you think. Uh, oh wait, wrong channel. Remember the guy who used to plug his Lamborghini in every YouTube ad he ever owned, which we're literally playing on all of YouTube's videos? This is the new one, like this is 2.0, this is the new upgraded version. Honestly, I'm not trying to take any shots or anything, don't get me wrong here, but really, are you going to play this on every video that I ever watch? Anyway, so in this video we are going to talk a little bit about modding and how it can potentially save your indie games in the future. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like down below to show your support. All of the thumbs ups are super super appreciated and they also make it obvious for me to see if you guys want to see more type of videos like this one. And now without further ado, let's begin. So for some time ago in a video for like a couple of weeks ago I said that I couldn't find any games to play and now I've been finally getting into like Crusader Kings 2 and also Mountain Blade Warband and it kind of made me realize something which is a topic that I wanted to bring up on the channel. Now don't get me wrong for what I'm about to say here Crusader Kings 2 and Mountain Blade are two spectacular games. I've been playing Mountain Blade series forever like literally since I was a little kid which also kind of brings me to what I want to talk about. They're pretty old and this doesn't necessarily make them any bad games or anything like that. It's just that I was a little surprised when I found out that they were still being actively played even though there are some games that are getting released and after a year or two they just die off of the market. And therefore I started a research by looking through the official forums for the games all the way to like Reddit and third party websites. I found out that the vast majority of the players mostly come back for the mods that are being released for these two games. It's interesting but it also makes sense at the same time. I mean like the game is released then gets updated multiple times where the developers introduce new features and stuff but there's a huge chance that they won't ever happen to add something way too specific that the users really do want and for one it might be because of legal issues or simply because they have other things planned but whatever the reason is the devs are a little more restricted to follow the project plan but the players are not and as a matter of fact when I checked the mods for these two games I was about to go crazy like I almost lost my mind there are literally countless mods for each game and they all range from small to big in size. Like for example, there are some that bring in a couple hundred of new models, extended features, some textures and stuff like that. And then there are also total conversion mods which are the crazy ones, like the Game of Thrones conversion for both Warband and Crusader Kings. And this also made me realize, for example, I'm new to Crusader Kings 2. I've been playing Warband since I was a kid, but Crusader Kings, I'm totally new. The only reason I actually bought the game was to play that Game of Thrones mod, which is so much fun. Like seriously, I bought the initial game and some DLCs with it just to play a modification that another player had created. And then I also realized further on that this is a quite a normal thing apparently. Like I've seen so many others do the same, which is through my research on Reddit and stuff. Not just for the Game of Thrones mod obviously, but for any mod that they think looks good and that they really want to play. And this also made me further realize that this is a huge market. I mean, we used to see modding as a little addition to like a GTA game or whatever it might be, but it's actually an entire community who also happens to be a part of our gaming and game dev community. And now I also happen to see that there is a huge marketing opportunity and a potential invitation you can send for many new players who would otherwise not be interested in your game. And it's all done just by adding the option to mod your game freely. And you're not only going to invite the modders to play your game, but it will also allow players who don't seem that interested in your story to still purchase the game for a modified story or gameplay that another player has created for you. And beside the money side of things, you will also create yourself a name for allowing creativity in your games. Like at this point, you're literally telling your players, come do whatever you want in the game and publish it for others to download. And it's also going to promote you in return. And this doesn't just make it more fun for the modders to actually play and take advantage of your game, but also for the players. Like for example, in Warband, perhaps I want to play as a bandit, but the game doesn't really allow that. Or maybe I grow tired of the same old armors that the game has. Maybe I want whole new features in the game, like dragons, I don't know, whatever you can think of. Well, if the game enables modding, then I just know that there will be these opportunities naturally, which makes me more motivated to play the game. And this whole modding thing also seems to clearly extend the lifetime of a game. Like Warband is 8 years old and CK2 is 6 years old, and I know that I can certainly not name many games that have been alive for that long. I used to love Warband when I was a kid too, just like I said before, but I love it even more now that it has some variety to it. Now, of course, I know, adding mod 
modding compatibility to your games is not the easiest thing in the world, it's not the easiest task, and it most likely won't go well with all the games out there. Like for example, Firewatch. It wouldn't necessarily need to make use of modding. The game's main and almost only focus is the storyline, the audio, and all that kind of stuff. But if you have a game where players can play in a sandbox, in an open world, or free roam somehow, modding can be put as one of your main priorities within the development span. I honestly see it as an investment for your project, like it's a commitment you can make in order to secure your game's future. Obviously speaking, it's not a guarantee at all, like whatsoever, your game still has to be good and all that, but it's also got a lot of potential to it, which you're completely free to use. Now, obviously, since we are a game development community, let's talk a little bit further about our field and get into how you can actually implement this. What you're initially looking to do here involves loading assemblies at runtime. If you want to let modders code in C-sharp and not really worry about compiling themselves, then you can look into something called runtime assembly creation. There are also a couple of ways you can do this. Like, for example, if you want to let the modders use Unity as a modding tool, then they will have to download Unity and you will need to provide a project or a package with templates and scripts alongside the API and documentation, judging by how much effort you want to put into this. On the other hand, you can also create custom tools just like City Skylines has. And if you're not familiar with that name, by the way, it's a game made in Unity, which also uses custom tools and importers to add modding compatibility into the game. This is most likely going to be the better solution if you want to address more regular and mainstream modders so that they won't have to download an entire game engine just for modding your game. And if you're also going to use custom tools, by the way, you will have to consider if your pipeline will be limited and specific to like model types and stuff like that. And on top of that, you will also have to provide your modders with exact and clear instructions in regards to how you use your tool, how the assets have to be created and provided so that they are compatible with your game. And it will also be a different thing if you're going to allow programmers to code mods for your games or if it's just going to support 3D models and textures and stuff like that. And that's pretty much where I want to leave this topic, guys. I'm also going to include, obviously, some links in the description for reference that you can check out, and you can see how modding works by using them. I've mainly aimed at Unity, but you can also do the same thing in Unreal and any other game engine, really, if you use the engine in the correct way, by enabling this option to your players. And by using the links I've referred to, you should get a head start and find more information by searching on it, hopefully. And if you have any questions, if you have something you want to add on if you have any links references information resources stuff like that let us know them in the comment section and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching hope you all did enjoy and if you did and would like to see more videos like this make sure to drop a like down below and also hit subscribe to stay up to tune for new content i also want to hear what you think about this topic so make sure to leave a comment like i said before and let us know your opinions and even links if you have any and before ending the video i would also like to give a huge thank you to our patrons for making this video become a reality. I also want to give a special thanks to Richard Stans, Cupola, Trombear MCP, Matt Kalafut, and G.I. Jojo for all of their support on Patreon. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate the fact that you pledge and support the content. And if you also want to check out more on how you can actually support the channel and the content, make sure to check out our Patreon link, which you're also going to find in the description box. And now with that being said, guys, I'm going to grab some food for myself. I'm a little bit hungry right now. So I'll be catching you in the Discord server or in the comment section. See you guys. Have a good night. Peace out. <laughs>